All right. Well, we have officially hit the off season. It's not an easy time for football fans. Packers fans in particular, rough way out to join me to talk about some of the offseason transactions happening. What on earth is going to happen with Aaron Rodgers? It is Matt Schneidman who covers the Green Bay Packers for The Athletic. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So the first thing I, I, you know, I want to get into is just how the season ended for Packers. I had them winning it all and the way they went out was pretty devastating. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I had them winning it all, too. It really came to a screeching halt. It it was a stunner. You know, Aaron Rodgers, when I asked him after the game just what kind of emotions he was feeling, he said he was numb. I mean, nobody saw this coming. This was probably the best chance they had to get back to the Super Bowl since they did, you know, 11 years ago. Um, and, And they totally flopped. Aaron Rodgers has been arguably the best player in football the last two regular seasons. And then, I mean, he played all right last playoffs, but these playoffs, he, he totally flopped against the 49ers. The special teams were horrible as usual, and they crashed and burned out of the playoffs. So a stunner, and, and it threw a wrench in kind of Aaron Rodgers' future. He did tell us after the game that, you know, how this season ended would definitely affect his decision-making process for what his next step is, which we still don't know for certain what it is, but I think we have a pretty good hint. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you kind of addressed it, how much this will impact that decision. But just looking at how the, the, the rest of the postseason transpired, any surprises with the outcome of the Super Bowl, the rest of the playoffs, the conference championships were pretty surprising as well. Just immediate thoughts and, and how it went after the Packers, yep. who were the clear favorite, uh, at least in my eyes, shockingly got out of it, you know? Yeah, I, I think obviously the Bengals were the biggest surprise making it to the Super Bowl, but the Packers have to think that there was a huge missed opportunity because the last two postseasons, in 2019, they got destroyed by the 49ers in the regular season. Then they lost to the 49ers in the NFC title game. Two seasons ago, they got destroyed by the Buccaneers in the regular season, then lost to the Buccaneers in the NFC title game. There was really no team this regular season that that beat the Packers like that, except for the Saints in week one, and that was kind of an outlier. So the Packers beat both the Rams and Bengals in in the regular season. They beat the Bengals in overtime, 25, 22 in week five. Then they beat the Rams pretty handily by it it ended up only being 36, 28 in week 12 uh, at Lambeau field. But seeing those two teams in the Super Bowl and seeing how the playoffs transpired after they got out, Packers have to feel that they really missed an opportunity. Cause like I said, it wasn't like there was a team in the field who was, clearly better than them like the 49ers and Buccaneers were the last two seasons so they're left to ponder a lot of what ifs and what could have been but that's the nature of this business you got to play well for one game and they didn't especially after they earned that extra week off when they really needed it I mean their buy came late this season they were banged up needed that and then to go out the way they did I am curious though because Green Bay is a hard environment to to play in. No team should know it better than the Packers, but the run game was kind of what killed them. What was that post game like? Like, was that a big component that was addressed? Anything in that regard? Yeah, I, I think home field advantage. I don't want to say it's overrated, especially when you're playing at Lambeau. But this is now two post seasons the Packers have have had their season end at Lambeau Field, so. Their run game was not good against the 49ers. And during the regular season, you know, they had arguably the most, or or I should say arguably the best running back duo in in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. They kind of disappeared. The bigger problems were Rodgers. He played terribly against the 49ers, and then their special teams were awful. So, uh, you know, there were were a couple Zoom calls going on. That's what's tough about post games nowadays is normally you're in the locker room talking to everybody. And and now you only have time to be on one Zoom or whatever. So I, I was on with LaFleur and, and Rodgers, and it was just shock. Everything from Rodgers missing Alan Lazard wide open on fourth down in the fourth quarter to the Packers only have 10 guy, having 10 guys on the field to defend the last field goal attempt to you know the running game not getting going. It was just everything, except the defense. The defense played really well after not playing well the second half of the season. And that's kind of been the story of the Packers the last three seasons is they, they do one or two phases really well. And then the third phase destroys them. I mean, their defense was terrible in the playoffs last year. This year it was the special teams in 2019. It was the offense. Like it's always one thing. And and will they ever get it figured out all three phases with Aaron Rodgers as their quarterback? Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just looking at how the bills went out and how the Packers went out. I would love to see that matchup next season. Just, yeah. As it, but you know, my Bengals, they, they lost in the Super Bowl, but I think those two teams had a gut wrenching way out and the Bengals kind of that miraculous late way in, but we will get into how some of those areas are starting to get addressed with some transitions being made, but Aaron Rodgers had a lot going on off the field as well. He was scrutinized, whether it was by media or just, you know, the Twitter mob, but Mm -hmm. there was a lot of him to emotionally endure. And do you think that any part in how he eventually performed in that postseason? Because postseasons haven't been going well for him. No, they haven't. He hasn't really played well in the playoffs um, enough to to get them to uh, a Super Bowl since 2010, or I guess early 2011 when they got to the Super Bowl. Seems so much long. If you say it like that, it's like so much it's longer than you ago. think. Yeah, it's a, it's a long, long time ago. I, I was, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out. I was like 15 years old when that happened. Doesn't feel uh, that long ago, but it really is. <laughs> no, it really is. But I don't think so. I mean, this is a guy who's dealt with with scrutiny off the field in his personal life um, for almost his entire career. I mean, this year it kind of took on a whole nother level because of the vaccination stuff and all the COVID stuff and him obviously being unvaccinated and his controversial and at times flat out wrong stances on the virus and stuff like that, especially when he was on with Pat McAfee as he does every Tuesday during the season. Um, I don't think that affected him. He, he's been trained to com- compartmentalize everything, whether it's his relationships, his family, his stance on the vaccine, like, Sure, these athletes are people too, and I, I totally get that and respect that. But this is a guy who's maybe you know maybe it did affect him. I don't think it affected his play on the field, but this is a guy who's for his whole career been able to compartmentalize and and play really well on the field most of the time. So I don't think it it had too much of an effect on him this season. But who knows? I could be wrong. Aaron Rodgers is a really hard guy to decipher, and <laughs> and I haven't quite perfected that yet. Yeah. Well, you published a piece today about Tom Clements coming out of retirement, just as Aaron Rodgers is contemplating what his future will be. Like you said in the tweet, a 68 year old just doesn't come out of retirement for Jordan Love. Right. What can you say about that hire, what it means for Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love even? Yeah, so it's interesting because Tom Clements was on the Packers offensive staff in various roles for a decade, QB coach, offensive coordinator. Uh, an assistant head coach from 2006 to 2016. So when I say he's not here for Jordan Love, I guess he is technically because Jordan Love, if he's still on the team, you know, Tom Clements has experience helping a QB drafted in the first round transition because he did it with Aaron Rodgers back at the start of Aaron Rodgers career. But uh, Tom Clements is not coming out of retirement to coach starting quarterback Jordan Love. He's coming out of retirement to coach starting quarterback Aaron Rodgers. I can't count the number of times over the past three years covering this team when Aaron Rodgers has unprompted gone out of his way to praise Tom Clements um, and what he's done for Aaron Rodgers development, you know, always talking about Tom Clements, this Tom Clements, that, and I don't know if Rodgers requested this specifically, or if the Packers came to him and said, what if we did this Would this increase your chances of coming back either way, that move is clearly made to entice Rodgers to come back. I would be stunned if Aaron Rodgers isn't back in Green Bay after that move was made. I was kind of, before he gave his his post MVP uh, award press conference, I was kind of leaning toward that he's gonna get traded to the Broncos because he loves Nathaniel Hackett. You know, the Packers tight ends coach is the offensive coordinator out there now. Um, They have a roster ready-made to contend even though it's in a tough division. But now I'd be stunned and I, I keep flip-flopping, but I'd be stunned if he's not back in Green Bay because he has too much left to give as a player, so I don't think he's going to retire. And, you know, his relationship with the front office is smoothed out here. That's why he stayed away last offseason. They're bringing in Tom Clements to to coach him, one of his favorite coaches ever. I, I would be stunned if Aaron Rodgers isn't back in Green Bay. I know that's not what Broncos fans, Steelers fans, what whoever fans, Bears, Vikings, Lions want to hear, but <laughs> – I think everyone is coming to grips with the fact that this is just another sign that Aaron Rodgers will probably be back in Green Bay this season. Yeah, there's a lot of quarterback openings and Aaron Rodgers is the top prospect for them all. But looking at how that last getting into, you know, 
camp and all of that. He he waited out because the main thing was he wanted better input with the franchise that he put so much into. How big of a move is this that they hire a coach that he has so much respect for? Do you think that they're starting to listen to him? They're buying in and and giving him more of a voice here and really considering what he what he has to say? For sure. I, I think one thing when Rogers gave his extremely long press conference with us uh, <laughs> at the opening of training camp last season, the thing he really harped on as to, to why he felt a certain way about the front office last offseason was because he wanted to be more involved in decisions that directly impacted his job, whether it's, you know, I'm not necessarily coaching decisions, but roster decisions. He listed off a whole CVS receipt of, of veterans, Charles Woodson, uh, Brian Balaga, you name it, going back years and years who he, he felt were disrespected or, or mishandled on their way out of Green Bay. And we kind of started to see the front office valuing his input more when they traded for Randall Cobb, who's might be his best friend on planet earth. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's an exaggeration. And then throughout the season, Aaron Rodgers he has a purpose for everything he says. So he's not just going to say something if he doesn't mean it, like, like some athletes do, he would always say like the communication is a lot better. He gave a lot of credit to Brian Gutekunst, uh, the GM, Russ ball, the director of football operations and, and their cap guy, Matt LaFleur was never the problem um, to Mark Murphy, the president who was probably the biggest part of the problem. Um, so that has been smoothed over. This is just another instance of them saying, we're going to value your input. We're going to do everything it takes to get you back. And yeah, it does seem kind of like a, a desperation move to get him back, but wouldn't you be desperate too, if you have, you know, arguably the most talented player to ever throw a football kind of on the fence about what he's going to do next. I would, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't blame them at all. Especially when you missed out on last year's draft class of five quarterbacks in the first round. Now there's not really many great quarterback options to look at and multiple teams need quarterbacks. So it's, it's slim pickings this time around. So hold on to him when you have him, but his decision should probably become come soon since there's so much calorie or salary cap space that they need to make room for. That's definitely been a big topic this off season is how they're going to make room. But do you foresee Aaron's decision coming sooner because of that? Yeah, I, I think so. He has said that he wouldn't drag it out like like last offseason when we found out literally the day before training camp or two days before training camp that he was coming, which I greatly appreciate because now I can go about my summer <laughs> without having to check my phone every single second. But he said he would do it kind of with respect to uh, the franchise tag window because the Packers have a decision to franchise tag Devontae Adams or not. He said this to Pat McAfee, which has also said where he's probably going to announce it. So uh, Pat's off this week. So Pat's been begging I'm for it. <laughs> exactly. I'm expecting, I'm expecting it to possibly come next week or the week after, but Rogers said he'd On do Tuesday. it. <laughs> exactly. He'd do it in enough time to allow the, the team to, you know, do whatever else they need to do in free agency with the franchise tag based on what he's doing, because, you know, they went through free agency, the draft, well, technically not free agency because the news broke on, on draft day, though I don't know exactly how, how much longer before that he expressed his, his you know, frustration with them. But they went through the all off season not knowing if Jordan Love was going to be their starter or not. There was so much uncertainty because Rodgers kind of left them guessing and staying away and not saying anything. But um, this off season, he said, I'm going to make a concrete decision and stick with it. So I expect that to come in the next week or two. I wouldn't be surprised if it's next week. The, de the deadline to franchise tag people is you can do it anytime from February 22nd to March 8th. So if they do franchise tag Devonte Adams, I think him and Rogers are a package deal. So mm -hmm. uh, Rogers said, you know, to Pat that more so than anyone else, he'd make his decision in short order out of respect for what Devonte has coming up. Yeah. And I'm curious how much you've been able to, to see Jordan love or talk with them because of, the Packers extend Aaron Rodgers two more years. Like you've said, he'll be under contract to 2024. Jordan mm -hmm. Love's fifth year option would be exercised. So do you think that Gutekus would just swallow his pride and trade him or maybe contemplating starting him last year when Aaron was going through this? So where is Jordan Love at in all this? And do you think that he will stay a Packer? That's interesting. That's kind of the, the next domino to fall. We don't really know if he's any good or not. And I say we like us on the outside, the team probably does, but 
He didn't have a rookie preseason because of COVID. He didn't even dress for a game because he was the third stringer behind Aaron Rodgers and Tim Boyle, who's now the backup for the Lions. And then this season, he got injured during preseason, so only played one and a half games. Then during the regular season, he's still the backup, gets thrown in uh, at Arrowhead, one of the toughest places to play in the NFL, on short notice after Aaron Rodgers tests positive for COVID, plays terribly against the Chiefs in, in a 13-7 loss, I believe it was, and then plays the second half of a meaningless Week 18 game against the Lions when who knows if everyone's going 100% and you know the full starters aren't even in there on offense. So it's tough to evaluate him. And at practice, we only get to see him so much. We only get to see, you know, reporters that is the first 20 minutes and he's not even doing anything legitimate during that time. So we don't really know if Jordan loves any good or not. I don't think the Packers, if they are to extend Aaron Rodgers, that means they think Jordan love stinks. I think it speaks more so to Aaron Rodgers skill level than, than Jordan loves lack thereof. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not a general manager because I would trade him if they extend Aaron Rodgers. No franchise values the backup quarterback position more than the Packers, as we've seen by them drafting Aaron Rodgers with Brett Favre, although it was a little bit different circumstances. <laughs> but And then also drafting Jordan Love with, with Aaron Rodgers on the team. So I don't know what they're going to do. I would expect them to keep Jordan Love on the roster and not exercise his fifth-year option and just let him play out his rookie deal so they have a, a backup quarterback they trust um, with the system if Rodgers gets hurt or retires, whatever. Um, but I wouldn't be stunned if they traded him and kind of got back maybe a third round pick. Because as you said, this year's quarterback class, at least on paper, isn't great. Mm -hmm. Maybe a team mm -hmm. takes a flyer on Jordan Love and says, you've had two years learning behind Aaron Rodgers. Maybe you can come in and start right away more so than, than a rookie could. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, also a recent announcement, linebackers coach Mike Smith stepping away. Do you see any moves happening there? I don't know. That, that was surprising. And my guy, Rob Domofsky from ESPN, broke that. And, you know, I didn't really see that coming. Mike Smith has been so mm -hmm. important to the development of, of Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith and especially Rashawn Gary, their, their 2019 first-round pick out of Michigan. Um, who knows how they're going to fill that? They've had a lot of coaching changes this offseason with – Nathaniel Hackett, their offensive coordinator, now becoming the head coach of the Broncos. Justin Outen, their tight ends coach, going to be the offensive coordinator. Um, they've had Adam Stenovich come up to be their offensive coordinator, move up from O-line coach. They've had so many uh, moving pieces on the coaching staff, uh, promotions, departures, changes, whatever. And now they have to fill another spot, which is going to be a really important one because Rashawn Gary is a, is a rising star. Well, he's already a star in this league, and they're going to need to find a coach who can unlock his potential. But I think Tom Clements, like we talked about, is, is the biggest one so far this offseason. Mm -hmm. You addressed this earlier about the special teams the need to, to get that area fixed. They bring in Rich Passaccia, who found some great success taking on a very chaotic Raiders mm -hmm. team. Uh, did fairly well there, but he does have some correlations to some of the staff at Green Bay. What do you see happening here? And they bring in an, an assistant as well in store. So any expectations at special teams? It can't get any worse. So I, <laughs> I would have to imagine that it gets better. I mean, they were literally dead last in the league. They were horrible all season long. Well, I shouldn't say all season, but they were bad all season long. Um, absolutely horrific in, in the, their divisional round loss. That's probably the biggest reason they lost. Rich Basaccia has been, he's very highly regarded by the players he's been around. His special teams units haven't been like the best of the best, but they've been better than the Packers over the last decade, which is not hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> the Packers have kind of always neglected special teams. This year, uh, of the 14 teams that made the playoffs, the Raiders had the highest percentage of starters playing on special teams. The Packers had the lowest. And something Matt LaFleur said after the season to us, the Monday after they lost, was he'd look around the league and weigh whether he needs to play more starters on special teams because – Part of the reason they were so bad on special teams is because they have, you know, undrafted guys and, and first or second year guys who, yeah, they're linebackers who can also play special teams. But what the Packers need are like special teamers who can also play defense, if that makes sense. They need guys who like specialize in playing special teams, not just, you know, bottom of the depth chart guys from other positions. So special teams needs a complete overhaul. Yes, getting a new coordinator had to be done. I don't think Maurice Strait and their old coordinator was the biggest problem, but there has to be a scapegoat when, when you're as bad as they were last year. 
The interesting thing about Byron Storer, his, his assistant, is not only has he worked with him in uh, San Diego, Tampa, and yes, yeah, San Diego, that's how far back they go is the Chargers <laughs> were in San Diego. That wasn't a slip up on my part. San Diego, <laughs> Tampa, and Vegas and Oakland. But Byron Storer was also a college teammate of Aaron Rodgers at Cal. I don't think that had anything to do with the hiring, more so that he's Basachi's guy. But now they got to get players that can perform on mm-hmm. special teams. Everything from the long snapper to the, the – they'll probably have a new kicker for the first time in 16 years, 16, 15 years, I think. Yeah, they drafted Mason Crosby in 2007, and he hasn't missed a, a game since. So they'll probably have a new kicker. They just need a complete overhaul because they can't have what happened this season happen again. Mm-hmm. And Basachi has been coaching special teams for a long time. So I think since 2002. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's how he even broke into his career to begin with. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a, a good get. But when you look at all the cap space that they do have to move things around, it's like a puzzle. It's like playing Tetris. How yes. how are they going to go about doing that? Do you think it's going to be tough? And they're about 50 million dollars over the cap right now. Russ Ball, who I mentioned earlier, who's their director of football ops, one of the three head guys in charge, along with Brian Gutekunst and Mark Murphy. He's the cap guy. So he's going to have to figure out how to make it work. Extensions for Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams could could help get them under the cap this year. Extension for Jair Alexander. But regardless of what they do, they're going to have to cut a couple key guys. And and that could start with Zedarius Smith, um, their second team all pro from two years ago, who was injured all of this season. That would free up about $16 million in cap. I mentioned Mason Crosby, who's kicked for them in every single game since 2007. Um, They could cut him. He missed 10 field goals this year in the regular season and playoffs, though not all his fault. Billy Turner, their right tackle, who was playing near a Pro Bowl level, they could cut him too. Randall Cobb as well. uh, Cutting him would free up about $7 million in cap space. Then they'd have to restructure a couple of contracts like Aaron Jones, Preston Smith, Kenny Clark. So there are a lot of decisions to be made. It's going to be an extremely busy offseason for the Packers, not just with Aaron Rodgers, but with every other aspect of their roster, because they need to make space to, you know, franchise tag Devontae Adams, possibly re-sign Devondre Campbell, who is a first team all pro middle linebacker for them this year. Maybe even Rasul Douglas, who is a really good cornerback for them. So they, I mean, they have to get under the cap by March 16th to start a free agency. So those moves should be coming, what's today? February 18th, when we're doing this. A lot of those moves will come in the next two, three weeks. Uh, so I would expect a flurry of those soon. I'm just trying to enjoy my, my downtime until they start happening. Yeah, it must be a scary time to be on the Packers team, just knowing the chop and block is coming. And it's right. literally less than a month away for them to get to that point. Do you think that the cap space issues are going to be a concern for Aaron Rodgers if he gets – options for for more elsewhere or even Devonte adams do you think that that's going to be a factor in their decision i i think so yeah i mean aaron Rodgers told us after right after the 49ers game that he's obviously aware of their cap situation and he was asked do you think you guys can still feel the team that can t- can contend for a championship with the cap issues and he said i don't know that's something i've thought about and, and something that will be part of my decision but Matt LaFleur said there will not be a rebuild in Green Bay. And he said he would do whatever it takes to convince Aaron Rodgers that they'd still be able to contend for a championship. And there's a way that they can. Sure, it would require cutting ties with a couple of players that have helped them become one of the best teams in the NFL the last couple of years. But there are ways they can still, you know, be a Super Bowl contender, uh, even with their cap issues. So I think Aaron Rodgers, probably after the emotion of that, that season ending loss died down, realizes that. Um, sure, Devontae Adams would love to hit free agency and get $27 million a year from another team, but the Packers don't have to let him hit free agency. He, they can just franchise tag him, pay him $20.12 $20. million is what the franchise tag is for him this year, um, which is unfortunate for him because he's earned a lot more than that, but uh, he can't listen to other offers if they do that because mm-hmm. that, that's just how the NFL works. But yeah, I think more so it would way into Roger's decision because he has a little bit more uh, control over where he goes next, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Is it safe to say that Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers will stay together though? I would imagine so. Um, if, if they're both in Green Bay, obviously they're both together. I think if Aaron Rodgers returns to Green, I think Devontae Adams is going to be back in Green Bay regardless because the Packers aren't going to let him hit free agency. They're either going to franchise tag him 
or extend him or franchise tag him and then extend him uh, mm -hmm. at some point. So Aaron Rodgers obviously is a different story. Um, he obviously has more of a chance to either retire or, or play elsewhere. I did think that a while ago there was a chance they both played for the Broncos because they have a bunch of cap space. You know, both those guys love Nathaniel Hackett. Um, and obviously, you know, what team wouldn't want both those guys, but how many teams would be willing to part with, let's say three first round picks, two second round picks and a player or two players for who have been the best quarterback and best wide receiver in the NFL the last two seasons. I know Cooper cup was better this year, but overall mm -hmm. the last two seasons, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't know if any team would be willing to give up that much. Maybe the Broncos would, but that's why I think it's a lot less of a chance. They end up together if they both leave. Um, whereas I think Devonte stays. And I think if Devonte is back, that gives Aaron Rodgers much more of a reason to come back. And, and I think ultimately both of them are back here in green Bay. Yeah. I I'm starting to get that feeling too, but if they did leave Packers would be forced into a rebuild. Don't you think? They could be. Um, it, it all depends on how good Jordan Love is. I mean, only they really know. They could try a formula like the 49ers with a mediocre quarterback. I, I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo's anything too special, but a really good running game, um, a dominant offensive line, and a really good defense. And with those picks and with that cap space that they would be able to free up by not having Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers on the team, if that were to happen, they could help bolster their run game even more, not with running backs, but with offensive linemen. Um, Cause AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones are obviously really good already, but to bolster their defense even more, maybe keep both Devondre Campbell and Rasul Douglas instead of just one upgrade on the defensive line upgrade at pass rusher. So, so listen, the 49ers have showed that it can work the last couple of years, getting to the Super Bowl, getting to an NFC championship game, with a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback. I'm not saying Jordan Love is on Jimmy Garoppolo's level because he's probably not yet, but not having a superstar quarterback and relying on a running game and a defense to get you there is something that can work. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it would be a rebuild that I, I don't think Packer fans ever want to hear that word because the past 30 years have not been a rebuild with, with who they have at quarterback. And I mm -hmm. still think there's a way around not rebuilding, even if they lose Aaron Rodgers. Um, but I think that's a scenario that the Packers fans don't even want to imagine right now. And that move of getting Aaron Rodgers' favorite quarterbacks coach and the conversations of, like you said, smoothing things out. How involved is Aaron Rodgers in getting this cap space figured out? And is Devonte Adams involved? Where are they at in this whole Tetris of a game they have to they have to figure out to to get that cap space under? Yeah, I think Aaron Rodgers probably more so than Devontae Adams. He, he said, Rodgers, that is, that he would talk with Gutekunst, you know, after the season ended about how the team might look next year. And I would imagine that included Rodgers asking him, what are we thinking about this guy? Do you think we're going to be able to keep this guy? So he could get kind of a, a stencil of, of what next year's team could look like if he, if he came back. And, you know, what the Packers have done since and what Rodgers has said since kind of lends itself to the fact that he thinks they'll be able to field a, a, another contender next year. Um, so I would imagine that he's been, in, he, look, he's not signing guys and extending guys, but he's certainly giving his input. And maybe Brian Gutekunst won't always take Rogers input, but they'll value it probably a little bit more because they know that if they don't, that could mean he's not their quarterback anymore. Yeah, like making a comparison to Tom Brady going to Tampa Bay, very involved. And, yes. you know, he had to convince them to let Antonio Brown in. They got Gronk out of retirement. Can you make a comparison there? Is it, you know, Tom Brady was very involved. As a, as a comparison to Green Bay, like where's Aaron Rodgers at in, in that regard? Yeah, I think the biggest difference is that I don't think Aaron Rodgers would take a pay cut like Tom Brady did so the Buccaneers could afford uh, – more guys. Now I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers should take a pay cut. You know, you, you don't have to. And I don't think he, people should look at him and be like, Oh, he's not winning super bowls. Cause he didn't take a pay cut like Tom Brady. He's not winning super bowls. Cause he hasn't played well in the playoffs and his special teams stink, but uh, you know, uh, no player should ever take a pay cut unless they're faced with, you know, we're going to cut you unless you take a pay cut. Aaron Rodgers would do that for the good of the team. He doesn't owe them that he's earned 
every single cent that, that they're willing to pay him. So um, similarities wise, yeah, Aaron Rodgers said early last, last preseason, people don't come to Green Bay because it's a vacation destination, which I can confirm from living here for the last three years. People come to Green Bay to play with me. And that's the fact of the matter. Like guys went to Tampa to play with Tom Brady. Guys come to Green Bay to play with Aaron Rodgers. And, and that's just what it is. Like these quarterbacks of their stature attract guys in free agency. So they're similar in that regard. Um, not similar in the fact that I don't know how much Aaron Rodgers will sacrifice financially to help uh, the Buccaneers kind of build or not the Buccaneers help the Packers build that supporting cast around him. Like, like Tom Brady did with the box. Mm -hmm. And even in their discussions talking about how, how long I'm an extension or anything like that. Cause we see a huge rise of these young quarterbacks, so much talent at quarterback that we saw, especially in the playoffs. Do you think that ties into his longevity? Like how long Aaron will stay with it? I don't know. He said previously that he wants to retire into his forties with the Packers. That has obviously changed after they drafted Jordan Love. I don't know um, if they or, or if he really has a clear idea of where his career is going to end. After last offseason, he said he doesn't fear retirement anymore because he kind of uh, got a taste of what it could be like being completely detached from football. And, and who knows? I mean, I, he can play another five years, probably. I mean, he's won back-to-back -back MVPs. He just turned 38 in December. I, I, he could probably play until he's 43, 44, barring a catastrophic injury. But I think it's about whether he wants to. He, he knows he can still play. But what he said to us last week, two weeks ago, when it, it's all kind of blending together after he won the MVP, was it's up to him to determine whether he wants to commit to everything it, it requires of him to you know, put his body and mind forth for another full season. He knows he can play, so that's not – the decision. It's just a matter of whether he wants to. Nobody really knows because he's Aaron Rodgers and he keeps things private. So we'll just have to wait till he tells us himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, at first when they were speculating him retiring, I feel like that was kind of nipped in the bud quickly. It, it mm -hmm. seemed, but there's a lot to figure out with cap space, early looks at the draft, any areas in particular, obviously special teams, not the top draft choice, but mm -hmm. any, any areas that you can see them targeting. I could see them targeting a, a tight end, a defensive lineman, first and foremost. I mean, at tight end, they don't really have a pass-catching tight end under contract. Robert Tunyon, who tied Travis Kelsey for the league lead in receiving touchdowns two seasons ago and then tore his ACL in the middle of this season, is going to be an unrestricted free agent. They need a guy who can catch passes at tight end. They sorely missed that the second half of this season. At defensive line, they haven't really had great defensive linemen besides Kenny Clark the last three years, and, and they've suffered defending the run and rushing the passer from the defensive line, at least on the interior. So I could see them going for defensive line or tight end early. You can never have enough depth on the offensive line. Packers have had so many injuries uh, on their front five the last two years, so adding a guy who can step in and start right away is extremely valuable. You know, a backup left tackle is just as valuable as – most other positions on the football field because of how important it is, especially to protect a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't exactly move like he used to be able to. So I would say offensive tackle, tight end, and defensive line are the three positions that the Packers could take with number 28 overall in the first round. Though I did not have quarterback on my list two years ago, and they took a quarterback in the first round, yeah. so I could be completely wrong. <laughs> that was the surprise of them all. I would be, yes. do you see them taking a surprise again? I don't. I mean, last year they kind of kept it predictable with a cornerback and Eric Stokes in the first round who turned out to be really, really good. So I would expect them to, you know, keep it vanilla this year again with an offensive tackle, tight end or defensive line. Like I said, they're so close to winning a Super Bowl. They're already contending for one. I think Brian Gutekunst learned. I'm not saying it's a mistake because at the time, nobody could have guessed Aaron Rodgers would have had real, reeled off back-to-back -back MVP seasons. But drafting a quarterback wasn't a pick that, all right, we need this guy now. I think now that they have that backup quarterback in place, who knows for how much longer, Brian Gutekunst will draft guys that can step in right now and, and play right now. So one of those three positions I would expect it to be. If it's a running back, if it's a cornerback, if it's you know, 
it could be a wide receiver too, because Devontae Adams, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Equinemius, St. Brown, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, uh, all likely, well, Randall Cobb's still under contract, but they might cut him, are all free agents in some regards. So they could even go mm-hmm. for a wide receiver in the first round, though the Packers haven't drafted a wide receiver in the first round since 2002. So I don't expect them to. Yeah, so much to unfold in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully you get that downtime, but I appreciate you jumping on and giving us all the details we need to know with everything Packers. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and where can we find you with all of your updates constantly coming in? Just the athletic. That's where that's where I'll be. Um, that's where it'll all be throughout this this hectic off season. It'll start up probably a week from now. Um, but until then, I'm probably just going to try and take a nap every day. Until <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. And we'll definitely be checking back when it comes to draft time.